the air. Well, we trust them with our beloved pets, but some say a local veterinarian clinic left their animals in even worse shape. And some even say they made deadly mistakes. Tonight, Coin Local Six reporter Carla Castaño investigates. Hi, Dr. Baker. Carla Castaño with Coin Local Six. We have some questions about some medications that were given that may have been inaccurate and some documenting. After several unreturned calls about viewer complaints, we went in to talk to Dr. Michael Baker. He's been disciplined twice by the Washington State Veterinary Board of Directors and runs St. Francis 24-hour animal hospital. He was busy but agreed to talk to us another time about the 22 Better Business Bureau complaints. Complaints of deadly mistakes. I basically just broke down in tears. It broke my heart. It really did. Abby died at nine years old. She should have lived 70 years easy. Twelve hours after being taken to St. Francis 24-hour animal hospital. I was not allowed to go back to, and she um, came out with blood in her eye. Tad Adamski says his bird went in for a bacterial infection and came out with a head injury. I heard a lot of uh, ruckus going on back there. Sounded like she could have been on the floor. She got loose from them. Either they had to grab her and hold her too much, or she fell. Alice Stair died three days after visiting the clinic. Their diagnosis of it all was completely wrong. He was just a puppy. He had a major um, lung issue going on. And the fact that they didn't pick up on that was rather alarming. Michael Juris adopted another chocolate lab, but says Alistair might still be alive had he taken him to a different animal hospital. They gave that prescription to him, and within the first pill, we just noticed that like, he was barely breathing anymore. And he was just lethargic, laying down when he at least was able to walk before. Tracy Thompson also says her dog Mia was misdiagnosed by the vets at St. Francis. It was a Sunday, and she was very, very sick. And they said she had parvo. Thompson tried to explain it had to be something else because Mia had just been immunized for parvo. Instead of paying St. Francis $1,800 to treat her, she called the Humane Society where she adopted Mia. The Humane Society said to bring her back to them. Don't let her, don't let them treat her for parvo. She doesn't have parvo. Bring her back. They will do all the testing and they'll take care of her. Turns out Mia just needed a little rest. To find out if anything is being done about all these complaints against St. Francis, we drove to Olympia, Washington. Veterinary practices are monitored by the State Board of Health. We've had lots of complaints. In fact, we have six that are open right now. Even though there have been numerous reports from overbilling to pet safety concerns, the doors will likely stay open because not much seems to stick. What we have to do is look to see what we can prove. Is there evidence that's provable? Is that evidence provable and, and the proof shows that they violated a law or a standard of care or professional conduct? And the majority of complaints are about Dr. Baker's customer service skills. First 24-hour clinic in Vancouver and Clark County. But when we um, met with Dr. Baker, it was another story. He even took us on a tour care. of the hospital. You've been disciplined twice, I believe, for not keeping accurate documents. And what's changed since then? Um, we always I, we always try to make sure that our records are complete. Um, we try to stay up on you know, the legalities. And Dr. Baker says his staff never hurt Abby. There's no neglect. We do have to restrain them when we handle macaws. They can cause potential. Um, injury. Um, they can open coconuts. They can take your finger off. He says Alice Stair showed no signs of breathing problems, which could have developed after his visit. It could have been a number of things. And he stands by Mia's diagnosis. We got a parvo strong positive on our snap test in the hospital. Um, and the dog was having clinical signs that go along with parvo. Given the fact that you have this track record of complaints and an F with the Better Business Bureau, why should people come to you? No, we, we practice good medicine, and we are a good group of people. But that's not a good enough answer for these pet owners. If you really love your animal and you don't want to take a chance on losing them, I would not take that risk. Reporting for you in Vancouver, Carla Castaño, Coin Local 6. Okay, if you've had a problem with that particular vet, we want to hear about it, and Carla's going to keep us up to date. All right, mm -hmm. let's switch gears and talk to Bruce about the weather. 